So welcome everyone. Um, this is the graduate assistant orientation for semester starting fall 2021. Um, my name is Karen Ferranti. I'm pretty sure that I have interacted with every one of you who are here today. And I'm really happy to see so many people registered um, and so many new GAs that were able to make it today. That's really great. So we like to be able to um, reach out. It has been a little bit difficult last year with being all remote. So um, we're kind of in that transition period still where some things are remote, such as our orientation. Um, but as I mentioned a minute ago, we're gonna also do some in-person um, sessions. So hopefully we can meet in person and um, foster that relationship between GAs, between faculty and so forth. Okay, so very happy to see everyone here. A few things before I start, I asked you, um, we are being recorded. Um, so just so you know, this will be um, sent out to you next week so that you will have the, the um, presentation available to you. So all of the links will work. All of the contact information will be available to you. So don't feel like you need to write anything down today. You will have all this information sent to you. Um, we will be waiting for questions till the very end. As I said, we're gonna ask you no chatting and no uh, keep yourself muted until we are finished with the actual presentation. Um, I, this is a very random item, but make sure that your MSU email is activated because that is the official way to um, communicate with you from Montclair State. So not just my department, but the entire university will be sending that. So it's really important that you get that up and running. Um, okay, so we're going to first meet the student services team. Um, I am part of the team, but we have a whole team of people who are here just to help you and all graduate students once you are admitted to the program. We have an admissions team and now you are under our purview where we are helping you. So we are under the direction of Dr. Laura Valente. Unfortunately, she is not able to make it here today. Um, she is the Assistant Dean of Graduate Student Affairs. That's her email if you would like to contact her. Um, she does lots of revisions on policies and procedures that we follow here in the Graduate School, um, works with um, lots of other departments and faculty in figuring out what is the best for our students. She is a wonderful advocate for every student that I have ever seen her work with. She really does fight very hard for you. Um, she does take student grievances. So if you have any issues um, with problems between faculty or whatever it may be, she is your go-to person. Um, she works between faculty students so that she can come up with a plan that works you know, good for the student, but also follows any policy or procedure that we need to be aware of. Um, so that's Dr. Laura Valente. And of course she uh, oversees all of our um, areas of expertise. So I'm gonna introduce you to Debbie. Hi, I'm Debbie Reynoso. I'm the Assistant Director of Student Success. Um, I'm responsible for the management of graduate students' academic progress. I conduct the graduate school's academic re review throughout the year, and I work closely with your advisors on academic uh, related student issues. Um, I also process students' requests, uh, such as change of concentrations. Um, if you accept it in a program and you have an option to choose a concentration, if you're in one and you want to you know, change to the other one, I'm the person to come to. Um, I also deal with the extensions and matriculation. Um, you all have a certain uh, time limit to complete your program. Um, and if you need extra time than that, you would just petition you know, for an extension. Um, I also deal with course overloads. Uh, graduate students are allowed to enroll in 16 credits in a semester. Uh, for graduate assistants, that's 12 credits within a semester. And if you need to enroll in more than that, you need approval. 
Um, I also um, deal with reclassifications. Uh, students are accepted into their program, if not fully, they could be accepted either on a deferred or conditional basis. And once you meet the requirements that were set forth um, for you, you would just petition for reclassification. Um, and if you met those requirements, then you'd be fully admitted into your program. There are forms for all these requests, and these forms could be found on the graduate website. I also evaluate and approve master's theses, applications, and course registrations. I certify completed theses according to the graduate council policy, and then I forward them over to Sprague Library so that they could be uploaded to digital comments. I am here um, also to lend uh, student support as well as Dr. Valenti. Um, I assist in student issues. If, if you're having an issue, maybe you don't know where to go or what department to go to um, and you're not sure who handles it, um, you could just call me and I'll connect you with the appropriate uh, services on campus. I'm also part of the care team here at Montclair State. Uh, this is a team of um, administrators that meet regularly to evaluate concerning behaviors of our students and the best way to address each student's needs. Uh, students are referred to us either by a faculty, staff member, or another student. So um, you could actually refer a student to us if there's a student that you're concerned about. Um, and some of, the, um, some of the examples that you might refer one of your fellow students to us um, is um, has to do with like mental health issues, uh, substance abuse or addiction, or if they're going to harm themselves or someone else. Um, so just to let you know throughout your stay here at Montclair State, if you have any questions or need assistance in any one of these areas, just reach out to me. Thank you. Now we have Susan Hagen. Hi everyone, welcome. I'm Susan Hagen. I'm the Enrollment Activities Coordinator in the Graduate School. Um, I facilitate the enrollment activities across all of the colleges, which includes doing um, outreach to non-enrolled students every semester, um, trying to encourage enrollment. I oversee our continuous matricul matriculation and leave of absence policy and um, any program withdrawal requests if ultimately a student decides they are not able to um, continue with their program. I also assist with the coordination of our new student orientation, which many of you attended um, this week. Um, I oversee our graduate development workshop series and ultimately our um, commencement events. And I also help coordinate um, what will now be called the student graduate student advisory board. So there should be more information coming to you about that, as well as um, a variety of workshops that we have planned for you for the coming semester. Um, some a mix of in person and online options. Um, so hopefully some of you can attend those events. Thank you. Susan, did you want to ask about uh, students? Oh. Yes, thank you. Um, so we have a Canvas course for orientation, which I believe our technical director um, had a, a, uploaded a batch of newly admitted students to um, yesterday or the day before. Um, so if one or two of you could maybe just check Canvas and let me know if you see the orientation course. Um, I recently posted the presentation, the recorded presentation for the for the doc students and for the master's students that we did on Wednesday night, um, along with the slides. Um, so those are there along with a whole bunch of other useful information and resources. Um, so maybe if one or two of you could just message me privately in the chat and let me know if you can see it, that would be great. Thank you. Thanks, Susan. Um, I'm going to introduce myself in a bit, but I would like to introduce our special guest for today, Linda Flynn. She is the Director of Career Services at the College of Education and Human Services. She is going to talk to you as a supervisor of graduate assistants, you know, to talk about um, best practices and what they're looking for. 
Um, and of course, she manages the career services at CEHS. So many of you um, may have interaction with her on that level as well. So I'm going to, um, she's going to share her slides and I will stop sharing. Are you there, Linda? Yes, I am. Just give me a there second. There you are. <laughs> okay. Um, all righty. Okay. Uh, today I'm here. Uh, again, I'm Linda Flynn. Uh, we have a decentralized model at Montclair State University. Each one of the schools and colleges has their own career director. So I'm the career director at uh, the College of Education and Human Services. And we work with undergraduate students and graduate students. Uh, so if you need our help and if you're from my college, I hope to meet you sometime while you're here in your program. But today what I wanna talk about is what you need to know as far as being a graduate assistant and what you hope to achieve and perhaps um, what you can gain through this experience. First of all, what you need to know. Uh, as a supervisor, I, I've been a supervisor for at least 11 years now. Uh, I have had many different uh, graduate assistants. Some have been outstanding, some have been good. Um, but what you really need to do is really have good communication with your supervisor. So the first thing that I suggest that you do is meet with your supervisor and really clarify expectations. Clarify not only what your expectations are, but what their expectations are of you, what you should be doing. The next thing you wanna be doing is kind of develop your schedule uh, and keep to that schedule. Be on time. Uh, we understand that things come up throughout the semester uh, that perhaps you can't make it to or if you're not feeling well uh, or if something major has come up. Remember, communication is key. So you don't wanna be constantly changing the schedule on your supervisor. You wanna keep it so that it's pretty regular unless something, you know, an emergency comes up or, you know, any other type of situation. Just like if you were at a job, you need to treat this. You have to treat your assistantship like a job and contact your supervisor and let them know what's going on. The other thing that's really important is that you dress appropriately for the position that you're at. Uh, many of you will be working with a faculty member, a couple of faculty members maybe, uh, you might be uh, teaching, you might be working in a department like my GAs do, and you want to make sure that you are dressing appropriate. I know I, I love it. My GA reached out to me this week to ask me what the dress code was. Uh, again, uh, in my office, it's business casual. Uh, I'm a career office. We need to be have that professionalism to us uh, as professionals. But again, everyone is going to be different. So you want to have these communicate these conversations with your supervisor so that you're, you're on uh, the same, same note. Uh, Karen, I just wanna make sure that you can hear me. Yes, I can hear you fine. Okay, great. Um, the other thing is don't afraid to be, don't afraid to, to ask questions. You're not going to know every answer. You're not going to be, you know, immediately know exactly what you should be doing. They're expecting, your supervisor is, is, is expecting questions. And that's a good way for us to have feedback of how you're doing. Um, another thing is, this is like a safe environment where you're in a professional work uh, workspace. And so if you're going to, you should be receiving feedback on your work. Take it as, um, as a, a good way of, of gouging what it is that you need to be working on be open to feedback, take it as a, a time or a, an opportunity for you to, to grow as a professional. It's really important. Uh, and the other thing is be professional. Know that you're representing Montclair State University, but you're representing your department. You're representing uh, the place where you're at, the faculty member that you're working with, um, but you're also representing your, main, your program that you're in. So be careful, grow as a professional, use this as a true learning experience. 
what you can achieve or what you hope to achieve is um, the National Association of Colleges and Employers have done extensive research on what employers are looking for. And this is very broadly based. This is employers in all different um, settings. So it's not just specifically for higher ed, but broadly based for you to prepare yourself for a successful uh, transition into the workplace. There are core competencies that all um, graduates should try to uh, achieve before they graduate. And we're going to talk about how these career competencies can be uh, achieved through your assistantship. So first of all, if you kind of read them, they're, they're basic, career and self-development. So as a GA, you want to develop your career goals. You want to know where you're going, what you're looking forward to. But be aware of what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are. Really carefully making sure that you are, you know, becoming proficient in the ones that you're strong in, your strengths, but also know how you're going to kind of work on your weaknesses. What are some things that you could be doing in your uh, position here uh, to improve those weaknesses? Communication is uh, key. You're going to have to really keep communicating with your supervisor, uh, but I just don't mean written communication, not how you grew uh, kind of project yourself as uh, uh, an employee or to them, uh, the GA, uh, not just in emails or in papers that you're writing. It's how you uh, kind of ask questions to them, how you um, are appropriate in those questions uh, and how you're listening to them and processing what they're trying to say to you. That's really important. Um, I think it's also, you're in, going to be in a position where you're going to have opportunities to meet different types of administrators in the roles that you're in. So they're going to be not viewing you as a student, but more as a professional. So uh, remember, you have to be uh, aware of how you need to speak with those people, how you need to communicate with them. Um, and these are skills that you can learn in the role as your graduate assistant. Um, you want to really learn to listen, try not to interrupt them uh, while they're speaking. Again, just learning how to process and communicate with your supervisor. Critical thinking, you're going to be making decisions, solving problems. You need to use sound, inclusive reason, uh, reasoning and judgment. Uh, equity inclusion, we are a very diverse university here, so you will be exposed uh, to um, diversity, equity, uh, keep in mind uh, to keep ideas diverse and think of new ways of, of thinking and demonstrating those types of diverse environments. Uh, demonstrate flexibility. Try to adapt to the environment that you're in. Um, try and take on leadership roles. Try and uh, take on projects where you have to plan, manage, evaluate, analyze. These are all important uh, competencies that you will grow with. And again, be professional, learn professionalism. Be present, be prepared, uh, demonstrate dependability, report consistently for work or meetings, consistently meet to try and exceed the goals and expectations of your supervisor. And then there's teamwork. No matter what type of you know, assistantship you are in, you're going to be exp exposed to teamwork. You want to learn to collaborate. You want to uh, learn how to compromise. Uh, again, in a very, in really important uh, competency to, to learn, to, to hone, to uh, grow in as an assistant in your assistantship. And last but not least, don't be afraid to be open to new learning technologies. Uh, again, depending upon what area you're in, you will be exposed to different databases, different systems, uh, and this will just help your career along the way. Knowing that and demonstrating that you can uh, use technology is so important. And what can you gain from this experience? Well, hopefully you'll gain a mentor somewhere along the line. You'll meet someone 
that can kind of help you towards your career goal. And you want to expand your network. You're going to be meeting so many different people uh, on campus. Uh, again, it's very exciting. Uh, try to establish, maintain, leverage those relationships um, so they can you know, help you professionally. Uh, and I wouldn't be a career director if I wouldn't talk about your resume, how you have to be thinking, uh, what are the types of accomplishments that you've done uh, in this role as, as a graduate assistant? Remember, try to keep notes or some sort of list of your accomplishments that you've done and as you've done them. You don't wanna to wait to the end of the year or if you're there for two years to try and think of all the things you've accomplished in this role. Uh, you want to uh, have content for your resume, building your resume. Um, again, uh, you should be updating your resume regularly with your accomplishments um, so that uh, you're ready for the job market when you need to be. You always want to be prepared. Um, this assistantship is true uh, hands-on work experience that you can put on your resume and it will show professional work experience. Hopefully this will, you'll gain confidence through this assistantship, uh, confidence to seek out opportunities you wouldn't have done before. And you really wanna take on those duties, any type of duty that will help you in your professional role and your professional goals. I loved that um, we talked about the events that uh, the graduate school will um, put on for graduate students. Uh, so remember to take advantage of any type of training or any type of professional development that you can do uh, while you're here. Uh, you'll be able to do that through the graduate school. You'll be able to do it through the department that you work in, uh, perhaps even university-wide. Uh, there will be events going on so again, uh, keep in touch um, with those types of opportunities. You know, again, maximizing every opportunity that you can. Uh, and I wouldn't, uh, I don't wanna leave out that it's important as students that you join professional uh, organizations now. You can get a student membership, which is very reasonable but it will also help you with professional development as far as different types of meetings that might be available right here in New Jersey uh, and that are, that are very reasonable to go to. Uh, if you have an opportunity to be uh, presenting at any of these things, these will all just help you professionally down the line. Um, remember, uh, I love the saying by Chris Grosser, it says opportunities just don't happen, you create them. So I want you to empower yourself uh, be excited about this opportunity uh, and, you know, understand that not everyone gets this opportunity. It's a, a great experience for you, uh, but I hope that you learn and grow along the way here. Um, I really want to thank you for having me. Uh, and if anyone has any questions, I'll be happy to answer any of them that you might have right now. Any questions, anybody? You can take uh, it. I have okay. one. Go ahead, uh, Andrew. I was wondering uh, about those, um, the professional organizations, will there be any sort of um, fairs or um, workshops where we'll be able to, uh, oh, there we are, hello everyone. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll be able to meet uh, or see what different organizations are available. Um, professional organizations are something that uh, there are lists of professional organizations depending upon the major or the program that you're in. Um, you can get that through the internet or I would be happy to send you a list of professional organizations. As far as on campus, uh, there are things that go on all the time. There is uh, Hire a Red Hawk is our uh, career development portal that every one of you has access to uh, where major university-wide events will be um, advertised through that portal. Great. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I'm sorry, what was the name of that organization? Higher Red what? Higher Red Hawk. It's right on, uh, if you go into Nest, 
click on career services, it's up in the top right hand corner. And you, you'll see hire a Red Hawk, you'll be able just to click on it. And it's, it's a portal that, you know, there will be any type of events that go on, uh, they will be advertised there. Got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Anyone else? Hey, Karen, so I, I have a question. So okay. yeah, this is my first semester. So I just got offered a, a, a teaching assistantship, a graduate teaching assistantship. Yeah, I know that counts. But uh, my offer says I will have like a 50% of tuition remission. So my question is, uh, is this is this offer permanent or can I like amend it to make it a, a full tuition remission well, in the future? Ryan, right now we're we're addressing questions for Linda because she is she needs to attend another meeting, so we'll oh. get to that later. All right, all right, sorry. Okay. okay. No problem. All right. Thank you. I have a question for Linda. Sure. Uh, how do we go about finding who our supervisor is? Your supervisor. Uh, well, Karen, I, I'm sure Are that they good? must have received a letter. Yes, your letter, your your outline of your duties and your actual offer um, will have your supervisor on it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I hope that I kind of answered any types of questions that you, you had. And I hope that you learned that you can really learn a, a lot from this experience. It's a great opportunity for you. Um, I hope that you'll take Take advantage, leverage your internship so it's best for you. Okay. Yeah, it's a great opportunity that not everyone gets, just like you said. Right. So Linda, thank you so much. We really um, appreciate that you were here and you gave us some really great information. Oh, thank you so much. I wish everyone the best. Good luck in your new adventure. Yeah, thank uh, you, Linda. And good luck in thank you. Here. Thank you. All right, thank take you. care, Linda. Thank you. All right, Linda. So Michael Costanza is one of our graduate assistants here in the graduate school, and he works very closely with the GAs. So you will, if you have been here, you will probably have received information from him, but you will definitely receive information going forward. Um, he helps with um, all about the assistantship system. He helps um, when the recommendations come in. And he also edits our GA newsletter, which I'm hoping that you will read because it offers very good information for our GAs. Um, he works on reports and spreadsheets and he does correspond with GA. So he um, is definitely someone you can reach out to. If you have a question, he can ha definitely help you. Okay. So what should you have done since by today? So um, your vaccination requirements should all be taken care of, whether um, you need to have that done through the university, whether you have done the actual vaccination and submitted your, um, you know, the card that shows that you were vaccinated or that you have gotten your official exemption, but you have to go through the university either way. Um, your I-9 and direct deposit should be completed. Um, I know there are a lot of people who are still scheduled and I've written out, written to a lot of you who need it. If you haven't done it in three years, you do need to do it again. They're very strict. They're going directly by the three-year date. So um, even if you think you've done it, um, it might be just over the three-year mark and they're asking you to do it again. So just please try to make it as soon as possible. I can't finish your hire until your I-9 is complete. <clears throat> um, once you're completely hired, you're going to get emails from Workday asking you to please do all your onboarding tasks. So please do that. That'll be uh, tax, um, you know, how you want to claim on your taxes and so forth. Lots of other questions, depending on your personal situation. So it's not always the same as someone else. 
Um, any international students, you must have a valid work permit, your visa and social security number all before you begin work. Um, the social security number needs to be done before the I-9. And so all of these things have to be done before you're able to start your first day. Um, it's really important. Your I-9 is a state um, guideline that no one in the state of New Jersey can work without having an approved I-9 verification. So that's that. Okay, next slide. So what's it like being a GA? I think that Linda Flynn did a great job of the things that you should be paying attention to and um, you know, working on to get the most out of your assistantship. But the graduate school is here to support you in any way. Um, me personally, with things that definitely affect your assistantship, but the rest of the student services team as a graduate student, you know, we're here to help you. If you need to reach out to somebody, reach out to us and we will either answer you or get you to the person you need to talk to. Um, again, as Linda said, your supervisor is very important. You're going to come up with a list of duties um, and create a schedule. I have nothing to do with your schedule that happens directly through your supervisor. And um, so I'm just administering the program, but your supervisor is your direct boss. So that's who you need to um, work all these details out with. Um, if you have, if you are thinking or you were offered another position on campus, please check with me first. If your assistantship says 20 hours a week, you are not permitted to work anywhere else. If it's less than that, we can talk about it. Um, GAs are not permitted to work more than 20 hours, so it has to add up to that amount. So contact me first. Um, if you do have two positions and you're approved, I have to let HR know. So don't just go ahead and do it. Um, it has to go through the proper channel. Next, Debbie. So this is um, a sample offer. Everyone who has been appointed, which should be all of you, have this. And um, we did have a question before, who is your supervisor? And that should, it says it right here on the top of your offer, position supervisor, Ed Brown. Um, you know, your department is there. Now your stipend is listed. This person is getting $7,000 and that will be for the entire term of their appointment. If you look at the top right, appointment period is 9-1 to 6-30. So that $7,000 is for both semesters. Um, what they do is they take your $7,000 and divide it equally among the weeks and you will get a direct deposit every two weeks into your account. Um, and it's, it's the same amount unless you change your taxes because they're dividing it equally. So there's no um, timesheet that you need to fill out. There's no, um, you don't have to do anything in Workday. This is a stipend and it happens automatically. Um, on the right-hand side, it says tuition remission. This person is getting 24 credits. What we will do is take 12 credits for the fall and apply that to your tuition. If you're only taking six or nine credits, that's all we're gonna apply. We're not gonna put more on there than the, the amount of courses and credits that you're taking. And then the other 12 would be available for the fall, uh, the spring. Now, if you're taking nine credits and nine credits, that leaves six credits that you're not using. You can use that in the winter. You can use it in the summer, the summer following your assistantship. So next summer. Um, but again, only if you have credits that are available, you're not going to get any more tuition remission than what is listed on your offer. Offers are all different very different, especially doctoral students. Um, they do their very best to give um, as many students some assistance as possible. So that means there are a lot of different options. Um, 
and that's it. There is a description there of your job duties. It's usually very general and your supervisor should be going over that in more detail. Okay. So your tuition, uh, whoop, stipend, tuition. <laughs> okay. Um, so we talked a little bit about your tuition, how it's applied. Um, there are a number of fees that are associated with your, that may be on your account, and some of them are covered and some of them aren't. So your student services fee is um, a covered service. Facilities fee or computer tech fee, those will be covered by your tuition remission. Um, anything that's more personal to you is not, such as your parking, such as health insurance, such as um, a portfolio fee, so anything that's real, a lab fee, meal plan, housing, those are all specific to you and that is something you have to pay. So when your bill is there, if you are not, let's say you're only getting three credits this semester, but you registered for three classes, nine credits, they're going to apply three credits. That means you still have a balance that's your responsibility. And that should be paid on the time limit, you know, when, when the bill is due, when they're telling you to pay by. Um, your student tuition admission is still being worked on. So don't get nervous if you don't see it yet. Um, it can take into next week and sometimes even the next week. If there's a late charge, don't worry, once they apply your tuition remission, it will be taken off. Um, just be patient. I am in contact with them and there's just, there's just a lot of students. So just be a little patient. Um, as we said, half the tuition is applied each semester and don't call student accounts if you, have, if you don't see your tuition right to me because it has to come from me, they're not gonna just do it, they have to have word from me. So that's, okay, Deb. Health insurance. Did we miss a slide about stipend? That's the next one after health insurance. Oh, okay. So your health insurance, as we said, this is not a covered service. If you register for nine credits or more, you automatically get enrolled and the fee will be on your bill. The bill is $2,274. They gave a big discount. Anybody who was a GA and had insurance last year can tell you they really cut the price down a lot. Um, so if you want to waive it, you have other insurance, you can do so by providing a copy of your existing insurance and they'll take the charge off, but it must be done by September 20th. They will not do it afterwards. So if you want that charge off, you have to do it, you know, sooner is better than later. Um, and you've got a link is there that'll give you a lot of information and how to go about waiving or whatever it is um, information you're looking for, they'll help you. Next. Uh-oh. See stipend? No, I lost I the screen. Keep jumping around. D oh wait, I don't think it's sharing anymore. I don't know, this thing keeps like jumping. Now do you see stipend? Stipend, yes, thank you. <clears throat> so not everybody gets a stipend. Not everybody gets tuition remission either. But if you do, um, you do not enter anything in Workday. As I said, you're not entering hours. If you were a student worker at some point, you have to put hours to get paid. This is not the same. So as I said, they'll divide your stipend up equally and pay you automatically into direct deposit. Um, Social Security and withholding will be deducted. Um, and I can't tell you how much or yeah, what it's, it depends on, you know, what you are claiming. Um, we can't give advice. HR will not give tax advice. Uh, if you're not sure, you need to um, 
confer with somebody outside of the university and ask, you know, some advice about that. Um, on the current students, current assistance website, which you will have the link later on in this presentation, there will be um, the pay dates will be listed, but your first pay is 917. So, um, sorry about that. Um, yes, your first pay date will be 917 because you're going to start on the first. So, um, it is a little bit of a wait, um, but that's how it works. Um, you are on the same pay schedule as all other employees, such as myself. Um, and if you do have questions about your pay, you can write to Workday at Montclair. They will answer those questions directly for you. Hello. Hello. Um, Hi, excuse me. Yes, can we wait till the end um, okay. after the presentation? It's not too much longer. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So I had a lot of questions um, that people submit about reappointment. So just very quickly, if you're a master's student, you are permitted to be a GA for four semesters maximum. And if you're a doctoral student, eight semesters. Um, you must maintain a minimum GPA of 3.0 for masters and 3.2 for doctoral. I'm so sorry about this phone. Um, And now a lot of people say, uh, and I had a question earlier that it, you may not have gotten a completely full offer. Will you be offered something more or something different? I can't answer that. I don't make up the offers. They come from the department and the department will, um, you know, depending on what they have available to offer and what they feel they can offer you, you know, comes from them. So maybe next semester there's an opening and they can give you more. That's possible, but I don't know that. And probably they don't know it either. If you want to talk to your supervisor and let them know that you are interested in working more hours or, you know, taking on further duties, that's a great thing to do and ask them about it. Um, your appointment, as we, sh we showed on the offer, is only for one year. Um, then this process goes through the whole thing all over again. They put new recommendations in starting next September for next September, and so you have to be reappointed. I have to say that almost everyone does get reappointed. Um, unless there is, you know, an issue with the student that they're not coming back for a semester or they, um, you know, they're sick or they need to take a leave of absence or maybe you're just not um, performing well and you've had discussions with your supervisor and so that person isn't doing it. Whatever it is, um, you know, everybody has a different story. So I can't promise you're going to get reappointed, but, you know, well, most, most everyone does. Okay, next. So what do we see going forward? Um, as I mentioned earlier, we had a G, we do have a GA newsletter that goes out once a month. Please read it. It has really great information, things that are going on, things that you need to pay attention to. Um, but we also have a general GA newsletter called News You Can Use. You should read that as well. That's actually overseen by Debbie. And she and we try not to overlap information. So it's not like, you know, oh, I don't have to read this one because I read the other one. No, they're very different and um, they both would pertain to you. So it, it helps for you to do that. Um, as I said, we're doing um, a meet and greet. It's on September 22nd at 3.30 in the student center room 251. Um, that's the faculty dining room if anybody is aware of where that is. Um, you will get an invitation and a little bit of, um, you know, brief overview about what it's going to be. So you can, uh, I hope no. that you will come. It will be an in-person um, session um, and we're going to 
meet other people from your program, just other GAs. Um, so look forward to that. We also do a GA check-in once a semester where we have done them um, electronically through Zoom. And I think we probably will do that again this semester just to kind of check in, see how everyone's doing, anybody have issues. And it's kind of nice to all be together and just kind of um, put out there what you're dealing with or you have any questions. Because very often other GAs can help you along with that. Um, I've never been a GA. So while I do supervise the whole program, I really don't know what it's really like. And so I think other GAs are a great source for you as well. Okay. And these two resources are current assistance um, link, which gives the pay dates, which um, lists our policy manual and um, Q and A and lots of other information. So definitely um, view that. And of course the updated terms and policies um, that has been updated for this year. While we went through some of the terms, the policies and procedures, there is so much more and I would bore you to tears if I went through every single one. So I highlighted the ones that I get most questions about and that people put forward on there um, when they registered, if they had a question, I tried to answer those that were uh, you know, applicable to many people. So um, please read the policy manual. And if you have questions about it, please let me know. <laughs> 